right. So we need to determine the inverse. If it exists. So we'll see. We need to row reduce this guy. And we, so we need to get that into reduce row echelon four. Identity matrix is our is our goal. And let's see what we can do here. Uh, I don't want to do that. I can do, oops, I think. Possibly. Actually, yeah, right? So off the bat, my whole, like, efforts of copying and pasting kind of went down the drain, I think. Well, actually, let me do, um, we do a negative R3 plus R1 to get us started. So that's going to zero out. Oh, that's too big. All right, so that's going to go away. That'll stay put. That'll stay put. This will change. Might be easier to just rewrite it. Stay, stay. Trying so hard to be lazy here, it's not working. Zero, stays put, stays put, negative one, stays put, stays put, negative one, stays put. Okay. It looks like, yeah, so that's our, our recipe, I guess. Uh, I can do a R, no, I was going to say R1 plus R4, but that's not, not going to advance the cause, I don't think. All right, so let me do the swap. I didn't, I didn't want to, but I'm going to. So R1 swap with R3. I think I'm all right after this. So one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, and then zero, one, zero, negative one, one, zero, negative one, zero. All right, so I think I will do a negative R2 plus R3. Can I do that? Keep trying to right click. Negative R2 plus R3. So that's going to swap out R3. So it stays put, goes to zero, negative one, negative one, one negative one, 
negative one, zero. I think. All right, and then I think in our next step, we show that it is not something that has an inverse because R3 plus R4 is going to zero out R4. So it's not something that can become the identity matrix. Not what I wanted. Yeah, I think I'm just going to look at it. Zeroes out. Row four cannot become the identity matrix. Therefore, did we name it? It wasn't named, right? Therefore, not invertible. Okay. So if the original matrix cannot row reduce down to the identity matrix, then there's no reason to start with the identity matrix on the other side, so it, it's not something that's invertible. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the next one. like row one is pretty good as is. I mean, we'll negate it, obviously, but let me do a kind of similar to what I did. Let's try to anyway. Here. We'll just go that route from now on. Instead of trying to copy. Oh, whoa, maybe not. Why would that be the default size? Oh, yeah. Alright, so let's see here. Let us do. Well, I'm going to zero out. I'm going to get into echelon form. So let's do 3R1 plus R2. Negative 3R1 plus R2. 5R1 plus R3. And then 3R1 plus R4. Sorry, well, that, that requires me to do this, which sucks. Actually, I'm going to have to rewrite the whole thing, so forget it. Because I, I forgot to do the other side, too. Well, that was a waste of effort. All right, so negative one, zero. Ah, you know what? While we're at it. Once we're done with those operations, I'm going to do a negative R1. So one. Zero, one, one, negative one, zero, zero, zero. And then we're going to have zero, negative one, three, two, negative three, one, zero, zero. Zero, zero, negative one, negative five plus three is negative two, 
0.5010100000 that's the only nice thing about this one. Uh, negative one. Oh, that's also nice. Uh, there's actually a few nice things about this. Uh, three, zero, zero, one. All right. So we shall do a negative. 2r4 plus r3, and then after that, we'll negate r4. Zero, zero, negative one, zero. Negative one, zero, one, negative two. So we need to, well, I'm going to do a few things, but we're, we're almost there. So I can do a negative R4 plus R1. And then we can also do a negative 2R4 plus R2. Either order, it will make a difference. I guess I'll do this first. So, zero, negative one, three, zero, three, six, let me see. One, zero, two. Oh, it's added to R1? Really? I said R1? Yeah, that sucks. Okay. Go back to that. Change this thickness, by the way. I shouldn't bother it. All this time. Oh, I can't sweep it in. Oh, I kind of did. Alright. So one, zero, two, zero, I'm looking at the wrong thing, one, zero, one, zero. Then two, zero, zero, one. Oof, uh. Hopefully I didn't screw all that. Alright, so I can do a R3 plus R1, and I can do a 3R3 plus R2.
so zero up here. Already. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. That's the whole point. Then one, zero, one, negative one. Zero, negative one, zero, 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 one, three, negative four. Everything else stays put. Alright, so if we just negate R2 and R3, we will then have it. It was asking for an inverse, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> After all that. I mean, I've done that before. But listen, if it's wrong, I don't want to know. So. Yeah. Okay, so non-singular. It's talking about a determinant that's not equal to zero. So a singular matrix has a determinant equal to zero if not invoked. Okay, so we just want something that would allow us to have a matrix that is invertible. All right, so two ways to go about doing it. One would be to go through the process of finding the inverse. The other would be to go through a process to find the um, determinant. Another way, I suppose, would be to try to rely on some properties to see where that goes. But generally, what we end up doing is, is try to um, simplify and see where things go from there. All right. So let me actually. You pick a convenient row to work with, but you also would want to incorporate really the uh, the R value in a way that it wouldn't get in the way. I think I think I said that in the way that I wanted to say. It'll be nicer if the R value is a coefficient. I think than it would be if it's embedded in the cofactors, right? So in whatever the matrix are, the matrices are. So if I work with row two, I mean, I don't have zeros to work with here, so I'm just kind of stuck with that. So what I can do is I can say I, I have, again, j equals one. Why I want capital there is beyond me. j equals two, j equals three. We have the coefficient 1, we have negative 1 to the, and 
trying to make an arrow. Didn't work. All right, so the I values are what's relevant here. We're at row two, so the I values are two. So two plus one for the first position, two plus two for the second position, two plus three for the third position. Really, as long as you get a sense of what the alternating nature is, if you say, okay, two, um, row two, column one, that's a sum of three. Negative one to an odd power is negative. Okay? So I know that I'm going to be dealing with a negative quantity here. You can kind of skip the part where you actually write the exponent. I mean, that's up to you, but uh, for instructional purposes, I tend to actually just write it. And then what we do is we, again, identify the matrix that would exist if we crossed off the row and column that contained this entry. So this is gone, these are gone, we have four, two, two, one. All right. The second entry is the R. Negative one to the two plus two. If we ignore the we are we're already ignoring the row, if we ignore the column it's in, we have two, two, one, one. And then if j is equal to 3, we have a coefficient of 3. Negative 2 to the 2 plus 3. Ignore again the row and column that the 3 is in, so 2, 4, 1, 2. Or really 2, 1, 4, 2. All right. We have two identical vectors here, so we know that that determinant is going to be equal to zero. And that's actually the most important component. We have scalar multiples here and here. Right? Vector 2, 1, vector 4, 2. Vector 2, 1, vector 4, 2. Still going to give us zero because they're pointing in the same direction. So that's what I was talking about before where if you have a sense of the geometric properties of these things, it can go a long way. But really, I don't have to address even these components because the part that contains the R in my determinant is going to zero out, which tells me that it doesn't matter what R is. Determinant will always be zero. regardless of R. All right. So there, there's no, no case in which it's not singular. All right, so you could use a similar strategy for the next one. And in fact, I mean, very similar. Slight differences in the actual matrix, or the matrices, right? Because our coefficients are going to be the same, so we can rely on that. The actual matrices will be different, slightly. All right, so. I know that I'm going to have a 1 times a negative 1 to an odd power, so a negative 1 times the matrix 4, 2, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, I mean. All right, so that's this one. Plus... 
r only in r because negative one will be to an even power. Two, two, one, two. And then a negative three. Two, four, one, one. So negative one times, uh, no, six. Eight minus two is six. Plus r times, we got four minus two is two. Minus three times two minus four is negative two. All right, we want it to be non-singular. We want it to be not equal to zero. So let's figure out where it is equal to zero, and then everything else will work itself out. All right, so set it equal to zero. So we're talking 2r. We got negative 6 minus another 6, so minus 12 equals zero. So r would be equal to 6. So if R equals six, it's a singular matrix. Determinant is equal to zero. I want it to be non singular. So R should not be equal to six. Anything else will do.